I I have. Please go ahead, sir. I'll take from you a little later on an issue. Yeah, thank you. Uh, as I said, uh, within the enterprise, uh, data gets uh, generated in multiple ways. Uh, for example, uh, if you go to a bank and uh, we have applied for, let's say, a loan-based product, then all the uh, process which they do, uh, they collect a lot of uh, data. They might also be getting data, for example, from external agencies to understand what is our credit score. That way, you see that the institution as such generates data on its own, but also it gets data from a lot of third parties to complement its business process and the data within an organization keeps growing. What we also see and uh, uh, advise our customers is one size of uh, data governance does not fit all. It depends on where is the level of maturity within an organization and what process and policies they need to follow. Data governance activity itself is continuously uh, evolving. Just to give you an example, uh, we all know uh, from a banking perspective, there are a lot of regulations uh, which has been laid down. For example, uh, we know about uh, Basel 1, 2, 3, all of these regulations. As new regulations comes up, the process of managing the data within an organization also keeps changing. So that is the effect of regulation. Also, as an organization grows, it tends to acquire other bodies or uh, companies uh, for as part of this acquisition, that also leads to new changes within the organization and certain policies around data governance and management. So that is where the data governance within an organization continuously grows and keeps evolving. We can go to the next slide, please. Basically, uh, if you see, uh, we generally say there are certain accepted uh, principles, which we call it as generally accepted information principles uh, with regards to data governance as such. As I said, within an uh, organization, data is an asset. Because if you see, uh, every organization has some amount of proprietary data you, which is actually helpful for their uh, business. Uh, for example, if you take, uh, let's say, a retail industry, within the retail industry, they have this uh, hierarchy of products. You have products, then you have categories, then you have brands and things like that. That is their own data, uh, which is an asset to them. Then they need this data to be maintained and safely, securely. It should be secure. And any access to this data must be audited. Also, uh, in current scenario, if you see an industry like an insurance industry, they offer number of products to their customers. The product could be, for example, something covering motor insurance, something covering travel insurance, something covering health insurance. The product information is their own core data. But as part of the process of selling uh, the products, they also acquire a lot of customer data. Uh, for example, uh, you know, we all have health insurance as health insurance is offered to us and we make use of this health insurance, all the, uh, you know, the, uh, whatever we have gone through a particular claim, all of that data gets captured within them. So they need to be, you know, maintaining all this data because it has got what I call it as PIA information and they need to secure this data. So they are liable to uh, you know, uh, own this data, secure this data, and they are also accountable for managing and maintaining this data. So that is where you see that uh, there is a quality of the data is important. They need to understand who is accessing the data. They are accountable for, you know, uh, maintaining and managing this data. And liability is also with the organization for maintaining and securing this data to prevent any misuse or mismanagement. You can go to the next slide. So what we have looked at this is there are multiple facets of data and that is where we thought that today we will present what is called as a DAMA data governance uh, model. Uh, you know, DAMA is a in, in very well known uh, industry uh, body which actually gives out, uh, should I say, regulations and methodologies uh, how as to how all this data should be managed. Uh, 
for me it looks like a, 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 a pie where each there is a specific quadrant there are uh, 11 quadrants and nine data governance uh, principles uh, we will try to uh, cover uh, all these uh, quadrants as much as possible what we also need to understand is every quadrant might not be applicable for each and every industry uh, you know as the industry matures so they start embracing from this each of these quadrants which they need as per their requirements uh, so it is only a prescription uh, so depending upon the maturity they will start uh, picking up uh, uh, the services based on this uh, quadrant we can go to the next slide i hope we will start with uh, data architecture see basically uh, data architecture uh, basically talks about uh, the models the policies the rules uh, around how data is collected stored and managed uh, here uh, on your screen you see a simple uh, diagram uh, uh, you can call it as a logical diagram uh, this logical diagram uh, can represent uh, anything uh, like a data warehouse or a data mart what happens is uh, flowing from your left to right uh, you see there are multiple source systems there data is extracted from these source systems uh, brought down onto a platform it could be an on prem or a cloud platform then it goes through uh, what we call as a data ma manipulation curation updation enhancement all of that and finally it gets stored in this uh, data mart for downstream consumption so all of this is actually thought through by a person whom we call as a data architect so the data architect is responsible not only for working along with what we call as a data modeler to build uh, the tables in the target space but also he is responsible to understand Uh, how the data needs to be ingested are there any real time or batch kind of information which is coming down uh, upstream so that uh, that needs to be ingested uh, he will then work with the solution architect to understand uh, how to create the data architecture which is required uh, for uh, this particular uh, uh, requirement so this is what is at a high level uh, data architecture uh, we can go on to the next slide as part of this uh, uh, i said that we have something called as a modeling uh, data modeling is a, a foundation of any uh, data warehouse or a, a, any uh, data mart or any kind of a storage uh, uh, solution basically what happens is uh, if you break this data modeling itself i can call it as uh, there are three high level phases one is what we call as a conceptual modeling then we have logical modeling and then we have uh, the physical modeling conceptual modeling basically uh, at a high level uh, talks about you know uh, what are the different uh, uh, entities uh, which are uh, involved uh, in any uh, uh, you know uh, in any requirement uh, what what those entities are there for what kind of information it stores uh, all of this information is gathered at that level when it comes to logical modeling basically you start off with uh, saying that uh, uh, you have these uh, entities what kind of relationship is there between these uh, entities uh, then you have these uh, uh, attributes uh, which goes into these uh, entities then finally you take the uh, logical modeling and you then convert into what we call as a physical modeling in your physical modeling you convert these entities into what we call as uh, tables and your uh, attributes uh, becomes uh, columns then you start associating the data types with those uh, attributes also what happens in this uh, process is uh, you form up the relationship between multiple entities uh, for example uh, you know you could have a master and a child uh, kind of a relationship uh, you can have one to many many to one those kind of relationships are all uh, you know created and uh, they need to be managed uh, carefully also now there is a question saying that how do we go about uh, creating these uh, uh, you know these entities uh, there are different ways of uh, representation uh, the popular ones are uh, probably what we call as er modeling uh, we also have uh, uml uh, unified modeling there uh, rational rows uh, we used to be used for that and within the uh, er modeling we have number of tools uh, available in the market which helps one build the er model for example there is a product called erwin uh, ember carrero er studio uh, oracle designer used to be there so these are products uh, by where you can actually design your uh, uh, tables 
uh, and uh, now uh, actually uh, when you look at it uh, uh, we are at, at a level talking about the normal transactional uh, modeling but we also have another uh, process called as a uh, dimensional modeling which is uh, used in your data warehouse and uh, data marts uh, so that is around the data modeling and uh, design we can go to the next slide please data storage uh, is one of the uh, key operations uh, for uh, any data governance uh, program uh, for example uh, from a data storage perspective uh, we have seen an explosion in the storage requirements uh, you know data is growing in volume and uh, you see all forms of data uh, which needs to be uh, stored within an enterprise uh, for, for example, we all might have used, uh, uh, you know, our uh, Google Drive uh, to upload uh, documents. We, we would have used our Google Drive to upload uh, images. Uh, so uh, all of this is a form of data which needs to be uh, stored. Now, thanks to the cloud providers like uh, Azure, uh, Google, uh, GCP, which is Google uh, platform or uh, AWS, we have the ability to actually store all our information on the cloud and uh, there are a lot of functionalities which they provide the service providers uh, the uh, hyperscalers on the cloud uh, which actually helps us to uh, overcome the challenges uh, posed by data storage uh, for example uh, just to uh, give a context uh, you know uh, we used to be constrained by a fact that uh, uh, we only we only have a limited capacity of uh, storage when it comes to an on-prem uh, server. Uh, for example, uh, you know, there were days uh, when we used to deploy our applications on-prem and, uh, you know, you need to actually uh, estimate uh, before you go out and buy the servers. So that actually uh, led to more of, uh, uh, you know, cost upfront cost being spent on procurement of these uh, servers. Now with the advent of uh, cloud-based uh, products, uh, you could actually uh, build these uh, servers on the cloud and then uh, through what we call as uh, auto provisioning uh, or auto scaling also, uh, you just need to look at how you are able to, you know, uh, based on the load and the demand, you will be able to provision uh, additional clusters on the cloud. So that is where uh, we come to the uh, storage and uh, uh, operations. Uh, we can go to the next slide, please. See, uh, content uh, document and uh, content management is uh, one very interesting area uh, within the uh, data governance uh, space. Uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, content management uh, in, a, in a simple terms uh, refers to uh, any structured and unstructured data which, which we can uh, manage. Uh, on the other hand, uh, document management is predominantly uh, managing all your uh, uh, internal uh, documents. Uh, just to give you an example, going back to the same story uh, where I spoke about the banks. Uh, see, banks today uh, are one of the uh, areas where a lot of uh, document is uh, being generated. For example, uh, as part of any of your, uh, either be an application, uh, you know, opening a bank account within the bank or uh, creating a loan application, all of this, uh, uh, you know, leads to a lot of uh, uh, documents uh, being generated. Uh, many times what used to happen is there used to be specific document management uh, softwares which were deployed on-prem. Uh, they would actually scan these uh, documents and then uh, these documents would be held on to the servers uh, available uh, uh, at different data centers. But with the advent of cloud again here, uh, we are trying to uh, build applications uh, which help uh, customers move away from the uh, traditional uh, on-prem uh, document storage or content management uh, process from uh, on-prem to the uh, cloud. Uh, so I think uh, we should uh, go on to the next slide, uh, Gopa. Thank you. Uh, over to you, Gopa. Yeah, thank you, Ramesh. So as a continuation of that, um, uh, the next domain is uh, data privacy and security. So we bundled these uh, two uh, uh, topics together because they go uh, hand in hand um, and and it is important to uh, understand what is the difference between uh, data governance data privacy and data security so data governance is all about uh, uh, creating the content how you, how do you uh, ma manage the content and govern the content 
but whereas privacy is about uh, how you are actually using and uh, uh, you know uh, protecting that uh, information and uh, data security will help you to have technical controls uh, to um, to protect that uh, information so uh, any information collected can be uh, divided into these two categories non sensitive information um, there can be public information uh, which is released by you know like press releases and uh, product release uh, files and everything uh, and there can be routine business information about the uh, upcoming offers that the companies uh, used to uh, release so these kinds of information is intended for public release circulation in the public and it does not need any particular regulation or uh, protection in that sense but whereas in sensitive information uh, there can be pii information or personally identifiable information um, nowadays uh, uh, many countries and uh, many many regions have a lot of uh, uh, data privacy regulations like gdpr uh, so where uh, any information which can be uh, used to identify a particular person or which is belonging to a particular individual should be treated as a pii and uh, there can be confidential business information which belong to a particular company and uh, any uh, you know, exposure to uh, that information might uh, uh, bring uh, um, impact in the business for that particular company so that's what called uh, confidential business information and there can be classified information and another category of sensitive information uh, which is uh, commonly uh, you know associated with uh, um security agencies military organizations um where uh, any exposure to this information will affect the wealth and uh, uh, you know the life of uh, the people of that particular region or country so uh, um, having said that uh, to protect data privacy we need to have a uh, need to have the right combination of three things the people process and technology so uh, from a technology part what can be done Uh, that is covered under the data security so we know that um, there are a lot of inf informations that we submit while we sign up uh, for a particular uh, you know um, a program uh, on a website or uh, you know it will collect a lot of uh, things uh, personal information from uh, the customer so it, it's all uh, based on the country of the law um, that that particular um, um, region Uh, and the regulation which is applied in that region they need to have uh, uh, appropriate technical controls to protect that information because it's pii information uh, like you need to have a, a, a database encryption uh, and you might have to use some uh, data masking uh, so uh, there uh, comes the um, notion of data security so uh, to implement uh, this uh, every organization will have a uh, protection data protection policy uh, which is supervised by a dpo or a data privacy officer every organization will have a data privacy office itself um, who will actually um, supervise the deployment of uh, uh, technology controls and they will monitor and control the data protection policy and, the, and any ongoing updates they will take care now uh, the next uh, domain is uh, data integration and uh, interoperability so in the very first diagram when we ramesh was uh, describing about the data architecture so we have seen a number of uh, sources so uh, that uh, that data from all those sources needs to needs to uh, flow um, through uh, a pipeline pipeline and they have to uh, uh, go to a target from where the data consumers can uh, consume that data so data integration is uh, uh, is a process of um, data movement from a source uh, data system to a target data system in simple terms so but on the way to the target uh, any uh, transformation which is required for that data uh, which will be which will make that data more usable or which will convert that data into a useful format so that the uh, data consumers can 
use the data for um, your their their uh, business uh, requirements so having said that there are two uh, common uh, approaches in uh, data integration approaches um, very no, well known approaches one is etl and the other one is elt so in the first diagram you can see uh, from the source the data is extracted uh, uh, e for uh, extract uh, data from source and then the transformation happens whatever transformation is required aggregation or uh, cleansing of data is required that is done that's what called uh, the t stands for transformation and then that transformed data is loaded into the target uh, so that is what the etl is so and, and there is another approach which is, which is called elt where we extract the data just like in the case of etl uh, but uh, here we load that and the uh, any transformation required is have which will happen in the target itself so these are the two approaches uh, so in uh, so some cases um, some tools based on the technology they will have the ability to to uh, do the kind of uh, you know um, different types of uh, uh, data uh, ingestions uh, it can be uh, real time ingestions and there can be uh, a batch based ingestions also can happen uh, which will help the data to um, to flow from the source to the target and the next uh, thing is uh, the uh, reference uh, data uh, or ma and uh, master data so um, Uh, there is an interesting uh, uh, information uh, which uh, many of you might have uh, known so there was a uh, in 1999 nasa lost a weather satellite on mars so it was crashed on the martian surface so then there was a congressional inquiry committee uh, was formed and uh, they did the uh, investigation and all um, they did, they did not blame anyone uh, either than either nasa or the contractor but they came up with some uh, findings so the root cause of that uh, particular issue was um, the contractor was doing the thrust cal calculations based on pound whereas the NASA, nasa was using something else newtons so uh, the lesson here was uh, we need to have a um, standardized uh, um, you know terminology across the organization so uh, just like this in any organization there needs a uh standardization across uh, the common terminologies and uh, you know um, uh, co common terminologies and uh, references so uh, there comes uh, the master data management concept so it it can establish a common business language uh, across the organization so that uh, uh, people will not end up um, um, having their own uh, you know interpretation or uh, uh, their own language when they uh, define uh, something so master data refers to the data uh, which are agreed on and shared across the organization and uh, reference data is the subset of master data uh, but it will help um, uh, so that it, it will it can uh, give us information about what are the permissible values Uh, to be uh, used as uh, you know the master data so the typical master data uh, uh, field fields can be a customer uh, product or employee and uh, some reference data can be also there um, examples are gender city state zip code etc now uh, we are getting into the data warehouse uh, concept uh, the next domain uh, data warehousing and business intelligence so uh, we, we know that we have seen in the data architecture there are a lot of um, source systems so the uh, at the end of the day what we need to uh, have is uh, we have n number of source systems they all have their own operational data and what business needs is they need to have uh, some insight which will help them, uh, them to run the business or prosper their business so it is not possible uh, to directly uh, interact with these operational systems and visualize that uh, data 
and use it for uh, uh, use it for uh, the business. And there is another challenge uh, because in an organization there will be different departments like um, sales, marketing, uh, um, engineering. So they will have their own um, uh, sources or databases. Uh, some of them uh, can be relational databases. Some of them can be something else. So uh, they have as they have their own uh, databases, uh, their own systems, sales systems like SAP. Um, uh, there should be a common place where uh, we can have this uh, data from different sources in different format might be. And uh, um, we need to have a common platform or common place where we will have uh, the data in a feasible format which will be desirable for the visualization of the uh, business themes uh, so that they can um, yeah, uh, use that uh, information in that uh, common place and uh, they can use it for creating visualizations. There comes the uh, need of data warehouse. So in this diagram, you can see um, in there are uh, source uh, flat files and databases which are uh, uh, you know, going through uh, whatever integration uh, uh, ETLs or whatever required. So there can be a staging area in some cases. Um, uh, most likely ETL tools manage the staging area or and from there data goes to uh, the data uh, warehouse um, where uh, it has uh, the metadata and uh, aggregated data and the uh, raw data also. Uh, so there, uh, the information from uh, the data from all the business lines will uh, come here in the data warehouse. And from there, uh, if the organization wants, they can have different data marts. Data marts are nothing but uh, they, they are kind of, uh, we can say it's a um, subset of uh, data warehouse, but they will be very specific to a subject. Uh, they, they are subject specific, or we can say LOB specific, line of business specific. So you know, depending upon different user groups, uh, they can have different data marts. Uh, so the data marts can be either directly uh, connect uh, uh, to the data warehouse and uh, get the data, or in some cases, uh, data marts uh, will uh, have a direct uh, connection with any something, some smaller organizations where there are no data warehouses, they can directly connect to the source files also. That's also possible. So in the uh, bottom side, you can see um, what happens when uh, somebody query a data warehouse. So data, as, as I mentioned earlier, data warehouse is not intended for operational data. It is, it will have, uh, it will not have real time data. It will have uh, uh, an entire organization's data. Uh, uh, so it, it will provide, it can provide an end to end view of what whatever is happening in that organization. So, uh, and when somebody queries a, a data warehouse, uh, uh, it will uh, take uh, data from the operational systems, integrate data from multiple sources in the data warehouse, and uh, it standardizes the data and remove any inconsistencies uh, if there are, and um, it stores the data in a format suitable for easy access. So, um, whoever uh, user group or uh, whoever applications which are using some BI tools, business intelligence tools, uh, they can uh, make use of uh, this uh, data warehouse. And uh, then comes the metadata. So uh, metadata is nothing but uh, um, the common definition goes like uh, data about data, right? So if, uh, um, uh, so in an organization, uh, there can be different data elements. So a data element uh, is a unit uh, of data for uh, uh, you know the representation of uh, any permissible values uh, 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 and specified by a means of uh, a set of attributes. So there, but all the data elements are not critical for the business. Uh, for example, um, if we are taking uh, going back to the um, bank's uh, example, Ramesh was telling. Um, their customer ID is a critical data element. Not all data elements are uh, you know, uh, critical data elements. So it is very important to um, uh, for an organization to uh, know what are the critical data elements uh, because they are critical uh, to the success uh, of that uh, business. 
so coming on to metadata uh, among uh, from these all these data uh, critical data elements uh, there can be uh, you know some uh, associated data which is called a metadata there can be business metadata and uh, technical metadata so business metadata is uh, um, uh, data from a business users perspective um, it will contain uh, uh, the glossaries um, terms and definitions um, every organization will have their own uh, definition and glossaries for a particular term for example um, the, the critical data element uh, is a customer uh, name so a bank will have uh, their own uh, glossary uh, for that particular uh, uh, critical data element what they are uh, what what they are meaning by this particular uh, um, critical data element so uh, business glossary and taxonomies which an organization follows and there can be business rules uh, for a particular line of business or a particular organization and every data set will be owned by some, somebody there will be a data owner so all these will come under uh, uh, business metadata whereas technical metadata uh, will have uh, uh, information uh, like uh, um, so table and uh, um, what are the source and uh, target systems uh, the schema field structures attributes and all that then comes the uh, data quality uh, a very important uh, aspect uh, on these uh, domains so um, so for quality uh, the data quality uh, includes uh, various uh, dimensions uh, if the data uh, needs to be uh, you know uh, valuable for the organization um, it should have some uh, quality uh, norms it should uh, it should be complied with some of the quality norms so for example if there is a cde critical data element um, uh, called uh, date of birth uh, it should undergo uh, all uh, these uh, uh, six uh, data uh, qualities or uh, dimensions we can say uh, but all of these di dimensions may not be applicable for a particular uh, data element so it's depending upon what kind of data element it is but uh, these are the six dimensions Uh, which will be validated against a uh, data uh, data quality of a particular data element so the first one is accuracy uh, so is the data is accurate um, for example if the customer name it has some spelling mistakes or anything uh, that quality check has to be done and uh, is it valid uh, validity uh, which is a, uh, another dimension which is also applicable for this dob date of birth if the um, we can specify a, um, a period from 1900 to till uh, the current financial year the data uh, date of year should be uh, should come between that so that is what called uh, validity and uh, is it on time so uh, the, the time, whatever data is uh, um, thrown into this uh, system is it uh, recent uh, because if if uh, we were uh, uh, that, that 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 data item needs was expected to uh, uh, you know updated uh, before uh, june 1st then it has to be uh, updated before that so if it is uh, if it is if the data is not uh, you know it's older than that then uh, there will be a problem quality problem so is it complete for example customer address uh, if the zip code is not there then it's not uh, complete so such uh, like that uh, uniqueness and uh, consistency is another uh, two qualities mm, and uh, when uh, then comes the um, how we will do the quality testing so we need to have a um, you know uh, data uh, quality process where we will do uh, kind of uh, um, you know uh, data profiling as the first steps it will uh, validate uh, the, the current state of the data uh, a measure of uh, the health of the data uh, so after that once the data profiling is done then we will define uh, the data quality rules based on these six dimensions we have seen and 
then uh, we do the data quality check and based on the quality uh, check results uh, we will uh, publish some uh, quality um, data quality scorecards uh, where we can visualize the health of uh, the quality of the data so this is how uh, and if any problems are uh, detected in the in the test quality testing then we need to go for a rca where we will uh, investigate and fix that uh, issue from where that particular uh, issue is uh, coming so this is uh, these are the um, uh, remaining uh, dimensions in a dama uh, data governance model so let's have a uh, let's have a quick demo of a, a tool uh, called the data hub uh, let me just i will take a minute to bring up that uh, environment Uh, excuse me, my uh, share screen sharing uh, uh, that the privilege has been removed. I'm not getting a, a message. Uh, Sir, please try. I think it is enabled. Yeah, now it's uh, enabled. Okay. Okay. Yeah, are you able to see my screen? Yes, sir. We are able to. Yes, go Yeah. So this is a tool called um, Data Hub. So this is a centralized uh, um, metadata management uh, um, tool, we can say, it, which has a lot of uh, data governance uh, features. That's why we thought uh, it will be good if we are, uh, part of our theory we have seen so far, if we could uh, uh, show you some of them, it will be useful. So um, this is how a data government, uh, governance tool would uh, look like. Um, so the, the most uh, prominent feature is an enterprise-wide search uh, through which we can um, search something. For example, uh, I just uh, gave uh, customers at this search query. So see what it uh, what it brings is uh, all the data asset in that uh, organization. Uh, for example, you can see uh, this is a database called the customers, and this is a table uh, where the customer keyword is there. The, all these are tables, mm, and there is a glossary theme, which is added by the business customer account. So, what is the definition of customer account? A definition uh, uh, defined by this organization. So, enterprise-wide search is the most uh, you know, um, um, prominent feature of uh, such tools. And uh, now let me search something. We will go to a particular data asset. A data asset means in its uh, basic form, it can be a table. Uh, so we will uh, go to a particular uh, table. Uh, so this is a uh, typical uh, data asset, which is a table ingested from uh, Hayu. Mm, here we can see a um, lot of uh, tabs here, right? Um, and uh, mm, if we go to the lineage tab, uh, we can see the uh, the lineage of uh, of that particular data asset. Lineage means um, uh, what are the upstream dependencies for this particular data asset? From where the from what source? This particular data data set has been inherited, and what are the downstream dependencies? What are the other uh, downstream applications uh, which are utilizing this particular data set? So, if we go to visualize lineage uh, uh, tab, we can see here uh, uh, there is a sample HDFS data set, which is the upstream uh, dependency. This is our this this particular this is this data set sample hive data set and this is the downstream dependency so if we go back in some tools provide um, the, the the kind of report where uh, like it can it can it can give you a report of uh, 
what impact these uh, data sets will have in case one of this upstream uh, uh, upstream source which have some problem then how it will impact the downstream uh, uh, systems that report uh, some of uh, the tools can provide we can give uh, the owner details what are the upstream systems all those details we can uh, get and if we go to uh, stats see here uh, this is a uh, this gives a um, information about um, uh, the table statistics uh, there are 3.5k rows and uh, two columns it, that table was uh, last updated on so and so date and here you can see a sample uh, you know uh, kind of uh, column statistics what are the columns and uh, uh, what are the null percentage uh, here you can see two uh, something zero percentage okay 0.6 percentage so the uh, any kind of statistics it will provide and if we go to validation uh, we, uh, we have seen data quality as one of the main uh, aspect right so even if uh, this tool doesn't have the capability to do the dq data quality testing uh, by itself uh, but it has some capability to um, get the data quality results from uh, other tools so for example it has integration with data quality tool called great expectations here you can see the result all um, assertions have passed so if you go to uh, that great expectations uh, uh, icon it will give you some statistics uh, what was the kind of uh, rule uh, uh, that we had given in the great expectation corner field for uh, think something it has given mm. so that particular uh, test it was uh, passed and uh, mm, then um, okay in each properties queries uh yeah schema schema is very one important uh, aspect because if we if in the source system if the schema is changed then uh, we need to know so uh, that uh, whatever schema change is detected it will report uh, so what are the versions yeah Yeah, here you can see uh, the schema changes. Uh, add in, uh, what are the versions? 20, 21 hours ago, there was a change. Some field uh, description was changed. Uh, those schema changes you can see. Mm. And uh, if we go to the governance, every data set uh, will uh, that um, data set will have some owners uh, because there should be a data. Um, owner and uh, data steward. There are different roles in data governance. So, who owns that particular uh, data set? This particular data set that we can that we can change the ownership. Uh, see if we can uh, change the ownership. And uh, there are different uh, um, roles: uh, data steward, business owner. technical owner so based on that we can change the um, ownership from here for for this particular data item and if you go to governs a uh, govern um, we can add uh, new glossary terms here so uh, we have uh, seen in the theory part right um, an organization can include uh, terms uh, glossary terminologies etc right so here we can add uh, some 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 terminology uh, uh we can give any parents optional and uh, create lots of items okay once it is defined then we can give what is observability um, uh, what this organization what is the organization's definitions for observability again add uh, that 
okay mm, and uh, we can add tags uh, And any, to any, uh, the, once these tags are added, then we can uh, add those tags to associate those tags to um, any any data set. And we can also add domain. Uh, we told you that um, there are there can be multiple uh, line of businesses, right? So in an organization, so um, we can add marketing, sales, or uh, um, education division. So like that, we can have multiple uh, domains also and give this ownership of. This uh, um, data set uh, to uh, different uh, domains. So domains also we can uh, define. And you uh, some uh, some description. Okay. And if we go to that uh, data set again, then we will be able to associate uh, that. Uh, um, that uh, domains see this is the uh, domain we had added operations because at this particular data set is a log file uh, or log data we will add that to um, an operations domain okay so now it belongs to the operations domain glossary terms uh, it uh, related to observability so we will uh, add that okay so so now we have changed the owner of this data set. We have changed the line of business. It belongs to operations. And we have added the glossary terms related to this uh, sample uh, data set so that people can see what observability means as per this organization's definition. And uh, what are the tags uh, associated with it? Because uh, tags are important because we can do the search based on um, the tags. Uh, for example, if we... Uh, search here see that particular data set has been listed here because we have um, tagged uh, observability with this particular data set so like that uh, there are a lot of uh, data governance uh, i have uh, you know being watchful of time i have um, i have uh, purposefully skipped some of uh, the features so i am taking a pause here this is how uh, data governance uh, platform or a tool would uh, look like thank you Google. Uh, back to you ma'am uh, in case we have questions uh, we are more than happy to pick up and answer uh, yes sir uh, participants do you have any questions uh, for the speaker Uh, these tools, if a particular institution wants to use or a student wants to explore, do you have any open source or are they proprietary in nature? No, this uh, uh, data hub, what uh, Gopa just uh, showcased as a demo, yes, uh, this is uh, released as uh, open source. Uh, okay. today, today, we wanted to focus uh, only on open source uh, related uh, uh, content. Mm -hmm. uh, that way, you know, so that uh, the uh, student community can start using these products. Exactly, exactly. And Data Hub is an open source product. Now. It's an open source product. So people can easily use yes. it and explore it. Yes, definitely. There is There are demos available within the product, mm -hmm. uh, which will uh, guide uh, step by step. There is adequate mm -hmm. uh, documentation is also available. And uh, mm -hmm. Gopa has just uh, shared that uh, link. Uh, yes, sir. in the chat. So yes. it is available for uh, public consumption. Thank you so much, sir.
And I think database is something which every application needs to have and nobody can escape from, you know, uh, learning, understanding the usage of these databases. This is extremely very important for, you know, all the applications that uh, we develop as probably students or faculty in all, all scenarios. So data is something which is extremely uh, uh, very important. So uh, security is one of the important concerns when it comes to data. So that is totally a different uh, relief, I suppose. You would want uh, to throw some light on the security aspects of data, which is very important. Uh, definitely, I will start off and uh, request uh, Gopa also to pitch in. Uh, from our uh, perspective, uh, I mean, we are uh, looking at a lot of implementations for uh, customers on cloud. Uh, so uh, as uh, Gopa was talking about this uh, data integration, under data integration, uh, we get uh, data from multiple uh, sources. Sources can be on-prem, sources can be in cloud also. So as part of our uh, uh, implementations, uh, uh, we uh, advise and uh, implement uh, security, a uh, lot of security approaches. Uh, what we call as uh, uh, security at rest and uh, uh, security at uh, in transit. Uh, that, that is the first thing uh, which we uh, discuss uh, as part of uh, security. Uh, for example, uh, when the data is uh, being transported uh, from the source, which is located on-prem, uh, onto the, let's say, uh, the AWS platform. Uh, as it is being transported, uh, we ensure that uh, all our uh, connections are uh, secure uh, and uh, it goes through a secure uh, link. Uh, and we also use uh, 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 commercially available security products uh, to do this uh, uh, tra transportation from on-prem to the cloud. Uh, once uh, it reaches the cloud and once it is uh, stored there for processing, uh, data at rest is also uh, encrypted. Uh, here we have two concepts. One is uh, uh, the encryption which comes along with the, uh, you know, the service called uh, S3. But also, uh, we also uh, ask customers if they want to use uh, what we call as a customer keys for encryption. So that is also taken care of. Uh, then uh, coming on at each layer, uh, we take care of uh, uh, the uh, security. Uh, uh, Gopa, do you want to uh, touch upon any other uh, topics like uh, NACL, subnets, uh, DMZ, oh, all of those? If, if we need, we can uh, get into those also. Yeah, yeah, Ramesh. Uh, so uh, uh, what the takeaway here is uh, we have a uh, security enabled at uh, each layer, starting from the infrastructure layer. Um, uh, no, not even infrastructure. We, we have the physical security, right? Uh, from If we are looking from a security standpoint, we need to have physical security for uh, the data centers or in the cloud world, it will, it will not be very uh, important. But uh, uh, but uh, in uh, on-premise uh, implementations, definitely it starts from uh, physical security. Uh, where you will have uh, access systems and uh, security personnel outside your data center and then we will have a uh, server security server racks will be caged and then you will you have uh, security for each layer uh, starting from os network applications um, and uh, then you will have a security model um, for every organization uh, and even when uh, we are from aws uh, uh, domain uh, aws has a um, uh, AWS uh, security maturity model uh, against which uh, organizations can uh, compare their uh, uh, their uh, platform or uh, their uh, um, systems uh, so that uh, there are various levels and uh, various uh, benchmarks defined so that they can uh, they can know uh, at what level they are actually and they also provide uh, um, there are uh, multiple uh, um, uh, tools and uh, no um, uh, scanning and assessments and everything um, with the help of that we can see a particular organization where they stands now okay thank you so much sir it was very very informative and you know uh, especially the demo actually probably should have pitched in a certain thoughts onto the people who are here any other questions from the participants you can as well unmute yourself and ask or if you want to Type it in the chat box, we will read it and then answer for you. Any questions?
people are happy with the, the uh, presentation and the information that you give sir they say it's very informative and uh, you 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 gave lot of information to them and they were happy with that uh, thank you all of you uh, we look forward to having uh, uh, some more uh, engaging uh, sessions thank you for uh, uh, making the time to come out and join this session thank you all uh, thank you ramesh sir gopakumar sir and uh, shrinivas ramanujam sir for spending your valuable time with the academic community and enriching them with all the expertise and the domain uh, knowledge that you have with respect to data governance on behalf of pyte i thank both of you and i thank all the audience for participating a small note to the audience once you log out of the webinar you will get a survey form the feedback form please make sure that you fill it we hope to meet you again in the next ba session uh, thanks to all of you have a happy weekend thank you thank you thanks ramesh thanks gopa thank you